Okay, so I have gotten asked this question probably since like early creation of this channel, which is like, how do you study for PA school? How do you study for undergrad? How do you study for anything? Um, and I know that lots of people want to know, you know, how do I study all this material that I have to retain and be able to retain it and then recall it and then essentially ace my exam? And so that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. What's up you guys, it's Benana. welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to be talking today about how we going to ace all of these exams that we have, right? You know, and essentially what that means is studying the material, being able to not only know the material, recall it, but apply it. And so I'm going to give you like seven simple tips in less than 10 minutes so that you guys can take these, apply these tips and, you know, essentially ace every exam that you have coming up. If you're new to my channel and you just stumbled on this video because, you know, you want to learn how to study, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know, you can take a look around, uh, stay for the PA related content and, you know, some of the non PA related content as well. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you guys is reading the material. And I know that this is like so basic, but honestly, not everybody thinks that they should read the material. Some people feel like, hey, it's okay to actually, you know, just listen to the lecture and that's fine um, because they can just hear something and recall it and be able to like spew that information out and it's good. But that is not the majority. The majority of us actually needs to read the material. So go ahead and make sure that you are reading the material that you're supposed to be studying. Um, and, and already right there, you are, you know, like 30 of the 30% 30 of the way there to being able to ace this exam. The next thing that you should be doing is taking notes. Now, when I say take notes, I want you to hit three points in your note taking skills. Okay. When you're taking notes, you should not only just be listening to your lectures, like, you know, getting that auditory aspect of it down, but you should be looking at the lecture, look at your teacher, look at what they're saying, look at the points that they're hitting, because it's important that you highlight some of those things that they're highlighting, because, hey, it might be on the test, especially if your lecturers or your teachers are the ones that are creating the exam pay close attention to the things that they're stressing. Not only are you seeing it and hearing it, but you should be writing it, right? And there's like something that goes to say when you write things down, you remember them, okay? The more you write, the more you remember. So you're not only hitting it visually, you're not only hitting it auditorily, but you're also doing like that textile and writing it down. When you hit those three points, you are going to really be able to engage with that material and hopefully be able to retain that material. The retaining comes with repetition. Uh, so again, you're, you're just a, a step closer to being able to really grasp and understand this material but you know, you're only two of the seven steps down. So make sure that the, you're following these steps directly, okay? The next thing that you should be doing is making a study guide. So that's like, a, I think a big thing. Most people are like, well, how do I make a study guide? You know, you write the material down, you're already there. You've been writing material from looking at the lecture and listening to the lecture with your, um, your particular teacher or you know, the PowerPoint that they're presenting to you. So you, what I did is not only did I write down like what my teachers were stressing, but I also wrote stuff for my study guide when I was reading the book. And then I would combine those two things together. Now I study differently for different classes in keeping the same concepts, but my study guides changed a little bit. So for my pharmacology class or for classes that were more like not necessarily like super question and answer like straightforward, I made bubble maps. Bubble maps were easy for me to understand and recall material because I can see where the different bacteria were or you know the gram stains were, uh, what they looked like. All of those things were placed in the various different areas and then I could be like, oh, I remember gram stain up here and if it was purple, it was this and if it was pink, it was that. You know, I can go down and be like, oh, that bacteria, yeah, and sludge them and all of these various different things. That made it really, really easy for me to recall when I was studying for those exams. But for some exams, a bubble map like just wouldn't work because there was more material that needed to be placed on that study guide. And so for those exams, I would make actual study guides 
from the combination of those two different notes that I did and I took at the beginning of like my lecture or you know my introduction to that material I would combine those notes into a study guide um, type it up on my Microsoft Word and then print it out so that I can go you know take it on the go with me wherever I was and just kind of be flipping through and highlighting and writing notes and just going back to it for more repetition. The next thing you should be doing is using your resources. You have resources in terms of your teachers, you have resources in terms of your, like, your library and books, you have resources in terms of your friends um, that may be taking the same course with you or that may have taken the course prior to you and so for me I always went and I asked questions. I asked for like after school time, before school time with some of my professors. So use those resources. I also use the res resources of my friends. There were times when there was materials where my friends would have actually like gotten kind of information that they saw or they deemed important um, and I just didn't hit that point and I'm like oh yeah I should have you know like that is actually a great point to remember uh, so it's important for you to glean and lean right lean on those friends and glean from the information that they have so use your resource the next thing that I think is like essential in any um, studying and remembrance for testing and exams for you to ace these exams is to do questions. You have to do questions. Now there's this beautiful thing called QBanks and QBanks are great because a lot of the QBank questions sometimes you know you see them apply like come up and pop up on the actual exam and so for that you're like oh okay well I kind of seen this before or I've seen a, a variation of this or something that kind of sounds like this let me I, I think I remember this so that's important for you to kind of just touch on but Doing questions allows you to kind of see at an accurate representation of do you actually grasp this material? You know, because if you know the material, you'll be able to apply it. And that application comes in the form of the answer to the question that you're being asked. So it is essential for you to do as many questions as you can. Continuously do more and more questions um, as you feel more comfortable with the material. The next thing that I think you should do is small groups. Now this kind of goes back to my kind of leaning and gleaning on your friends, but um, small groups in terms of study groups, right? And now some of you may be like, oh, like that's not me. I can't do the study groups. Like it's distracting. And honestly, like they're, they can be distracting for me as well. I do better, I feel, studying on my own. However, I promise you, if you if you go and, and study with a group of friends that are in the same class or doing the same material, it will be beneficial. Now, this does not have to be the only way that you study, but I think that it is a way that you should implement into your study habits. You can be like those people who are at the beach who, like you see, they kind of run and they just dip their foot in the water and then they dip out and then they go and they lay on the beach, right? Uh, because they like sunbathing rather than actually being in the water. You can dip into the study group. You can get the information that you need, um, you know, see the things that you may have some deficits in that your friends may not and vice versa. And then you can just dip out and go and study on your own. And lastly, the, the last and I think one of the most important things that you should do when studying for anything, um, but specifically exams, is giving yourself time. You have an exam coming up in like two weeks or a week, like don't start studying for it two days or a day before because that's just cramming. That's not studying, that's straight up memorization. You don't know the material, you're not confident in it, and you are bound to fail, okay? Uh, like trust me, you're bound to not get the best grade that you could possibly get had you have given yourself enough time to study. If you are a week out from the test or two weeks out from the test, kind of go through these steps that I've listed in a systematic manner from like day one to three because the more you go over the material, the more you're going to be um, confident in that material, the more you're going to retain it, the more you do the questions, the more you're going to be able to apply the material and then ultimately be confident when it comes to day of the test to actually take the exam and ace it. Um, I think one more tip, and it's not really for studying, but just in terms of test taking day, is don't let fear own you, you know, because a lot of times, like, the fear of the exam will essentially kind of negate everything that you've studied. So when it comes to it, just be confident that you've studied everything, you know this material, you've done the best that you can, uh, and knock it out of the park.
Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Um, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Please go ahead and also subscribe to this channel and like this video. Follow me on Instagram at Adana PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.